I think one of the most important things in this, and, and I think China are leading this, is the open source. We've already had some American uh, CEOs of big say, you know, they, they're talking of models possibly costing $10,000 a month. You know, there's already models now that American companies are charging $300 a month per user for. And that's really out of the realms of many people. You know, especially in the developing countries, uh, African countries, for example. So having these models open source, it allows those um, developing countries to access the same level of AI as the, you know, the most developed countries. And actually, I think that um, AI has, has come into the, the media a lot more in, in the last two or three years. But during my travels around China, and actually, the West are always shocked when China have a development like the Dipsix. Oh my God, you know, we. But after living here and spending a lot of time here, it's not a shock because you can see, like, you have Huawei, they had the Pangu model many years ago, but they weren't putting it out to the public. They were using it in industry, they were using it to, to use AI to inspect high speed trains running along the track. So they have a camera that scans the bottom of the train or various parts of the train. It can then identify problems on that train. They're using it to inspect power lines. They're using it in ports to make the ports more efficient. They're using it in, um, I, I visited a, a coal mine in Shanxi. Absolutely amazing, you know, bringing a lot of underground workers now above ground. So it's much less dangerous, much more environmentally cleaner work for those people um, you know uh, dangerous places like quarries where they've they're using AI to automate those huge um, trucks carrying rocks around. again safety so these guys are now not sitting in a hot cab of a truck they're sitting in an air conditioned office controlling it all from a, a console and I think this is where China really excel in, in bringing it and solving real world problems my impression is the US and Europe, they like to talk a lot, but China talk less, but do it.